Today, we hit the brakes on our Asuzi Trooper. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Pooper Trooper. That Pooper Trooper is the 1988 Isuzu Trooper behind me. And today, guys, we're doing a really detailed, in-depth brake job video on this truck. Uh, there's not a lot of good stuff out there because you do have to take the hubs apart. and You don't really get a lot of good video covering that. So I'm gonna go ahead and document that in as much detail as possible. It's gonna be a long one. So without further ado, let's get in the garage and get a little dirty. All right, gotta get these wheels off the vehicle. 19 millimeter socket will get the job done. Once you get your trooper front wheel off, this is what you're gonna be looking at. This is obviously the locking hub assembly. This all needs to come off, obviously, before you can access the rotor and pads. So what you're gonna need is a bunch of tools to get the job done. You're gonna need a hex socket. I believe it's an H4 to get this off. In lieu of that, if you only have Torx, you can use a T25 to get this cap off. You're gonna to have to take it apart like a sandwich almost. So start with the top layer. Then you're gonna move on to this hex bolt here, in which case you will be using an H8. Pull that assembly off. As we go through it, I'm gonna walk you through what you're doing, but just keep everything ordered and nice and together. Don't lose any of these components. Next, you've got a 17 millimeter bolts here that are holding basically the hub assembly to the rotor. Those will need to come off and then you'll be good to remove your rotor, but you will need those. As far as sockets go, you're gonna need 19 obviously to get the lugs off, 17 to get these guys off, and then you're gonna need both a 22 short and long impact socket. And that's gonna be for the brake caliper bolts you need to remove on the back. It's a little tight on the bottom to get the long one in there. So you're gonna use that short 22 to get that out. Other tools that come in handy, you're gonna need a screwdriver to remove some small screws inside the locking hub assembly. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver. It's always good for prying out old brake pads if it's been a while. And to push back the piston in the brakes, a good four inch C-clamp is my go-to tool. You will also need a pair of snap ring pliers, and these are gonna help get that little teeny ring that's in this hub off. Additionally, brake clean, very necessary. Some kind of brake cleaner to clean off the disc and rotors when you're assembling it. Some PB blaster to get those bolts on if it's been a while. And then a decent quality bearing grease will help a lot because you need to re-grease your hub. If it's been a while since this has been all taken apart, this can get pretty dirty in here and you should never repack it, especially when you're doing a brake job, all kinds of stuff and gunk. You can see all the crust kind of everywhere. You don't want that falling into the grease that's in there because it can really gum up and mess up your locking hub here. So that's all you need. Let me walk you guys through the process. Time to take this locking hub apart to access the brakes. Work your way from this front to back. So we start off with that T25 Torx. It's gonna come off and have a bit of a spring behind it, just like that. And oh man, this one definitely has some liquid in there, or at least they got some water in there at one point. So we're gonna have to really grease all this up. But that's what that looks like. Next up, we're gonna use our H8, our hex socket to get these off. Now this won't come off because there is a snap ring holding onto the axle there. So let me show you guys what that snap ring looks like. All right, kind of hard to see it in there, but there's a snap ring in there. We're gonna use snap ring pliers, pull that off. That's what's holding the rest of the hub assembly onto the axle there. We'll grab snap ring pliers of your choice and get in there and get that ring. There we go. And there's our snap ring. This should all slide out as one assembly. Underneath that snap ring, there should be a large washer. Don't lose this. If it falls out, it goes right on top, right under that snap ring when you're reassembling. Now for the next part, use a good high quality Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna remove a few screws and you don't want these things to strip out. So a good amount of force and just do it right. 
Next, there's this section here that's gonna come off with all the holes in it that we just removed the screws. And then you can easily grab a pair of pliers and just pull this little ring straight out. We're gonna clean it off. Doesn't matter if it gets too dirty right now, but we'll clean it off and regrease it when it's time to reassemble. So don't mind where you put that right now. This next section has to unscrew off of the axle. So I usually just get a screwdriver and you can kind of just spin it. It should spin freely. It should not be seized on there. If you're seized on there, you got a whole other issue you need to worry about. There you go. Go ahead and pull him off. Pay attention when you go to reassemble, this shiny circle part goes on the inside, so towards the engine. Let's try that. Basically grab the little bearing and slide it straight out, two screwdriver method. Don't be harsh on that bearing. If it's a little dirty in there, it's definitely getting re-greased too, so don't worry about it. Uh, it kind of necks down like a conical shape. The narrow part goes to the inside on reassembly, and the wider part stays out. But yeah, you can see some older grease in here, a little bit of discoloration. So we'll clean all this up real good, pack it with new grease, and we reassemble. Now we're free to take this next section off where the hub kind of attached to the brake rotor there. That's gonna be 17 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna use my impact for that because I can't do it all by hand, folks. You wanna make sure you're holding onto the rotor really well. Now this section should separate from your rotor. It might take some convincing because they're bolted together pretty good. And now at this point, you can also do both at the same time, pull it off with the rotor, but I like to just separate it. I'm gonna clean the back of it, clean the front of it too. A little hammer out here, and give it some love taps, you know. Just need to break that bond it has with the rotor. There we go, oh my God. That was really stuck on there. Uh, grease inside there's pretty old, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that up quite a bit. Again, just like the theme, we're gonna clean and re-grease. Time to get that caliper bracket off of there. Go ahead and move an extra jack stand behind to hold that caliper once you get it loose. Again for this one, long 22 up top, short 22 millimeter socket for the bottom just because you don't have the clearance with these thick control arms. Go ahead and pull your old gnarly rotor off. Not a bad time to go ahead and clean everything up. Now we need to get the pad swapped out, which is gonna require us to retract that piston back in. So what I like to do first, take the old front pad in, we'll be using that old pad to help us with the piston. So kind of flip it around. You don't have a lot of brake line to play with here on the Trooper, so that's a little bit annoying. I try to prop it up as good as possible. Now, prying up this front brake pad, just kind of knock it out. Uh, the old hardware can be kind of a pain in the butt if you want to work around that, but... You know, just pull these. And these have a little bit of life left on them. They're probably half, half their life, but they've been on there for a while. Go ahead and compare and contrast with a new brake pad you can see yeah about a little less than half actually and yep we're not looking to do brakes in the near future after this job so new pads going in go ahead and leave the old hardware and rear pad in there this is where our handy dandy four inch c clamp comes in and these ones are pretty straightforward uh it's nice the caliper design there's a nice flat back to it so you can get in there and tighten it down without it trying to fly too much just you can see our shiny new hardware installed in the caliper you can see our new pads are seated inside the caliper there nicely which is great because we need all that space to slide over that new rotor let's go ahead and put the new rotor on now before you just put your new rotor back together and try to bolt that caliper up you really need this center hub part because it kind of rests inside of here and holds the part onto the axle. What you need to do is reassemble these two. Now we need to pack this one with grease. I've cleaned up most of the old grease, so we'll grab our vehicle grease of choice. And we're just gonna really put a lot in there, make sure everything's covered. And, 
And with the hub starting to get assembled, we can go ahead and tighten our caliper on. Next, you want to tighten those two 22 millimeter bolts on the back of the caliper. Get those really nice and tight. Always start them by hand. You don't ever want to cross thread those. That's my general tip of the day. Always start every bolt, every fastener by hand. Cross threading is the enemy. And we're not in that much of a rush to cause irreparable damage. So just remember that. Before installing everything else, on the locking hub, make sure you clean off the old grease. Obviously put some new grease in there, guys. Don't be shy with it. You know the drill. Now, I'm sure plenty of people slap these back together if you go to a regular shop and they're doing your brakes, but you don't want that to happen. You don't want this to ever dry out. This next one's pretty important. Put that big washer back in there. And then you're gonna take that snap ring from earlier. We're gonna install that back on the truck. Now with our manual locking hub all back together, you wanna do a function test obviously before you finish up the rest of this job. So what we wanna do is show you now what an unlocked hub looks like. You can spin it freely. And you can see the axle behind there, the boots and everything. Nothing's moving. Now if we simply lock this by twisting the front of the hub here. All right, and that locks into position. We start to rotate this. You're gonna see, we'll go back to look at that axle again. You can see the axle actually turning, which means that hub is locked. So just to unlock it, Let's go back. And now we know that we have full functionality. We're unlocked now and we're not getting that axle turning. And with the front brakes all assembled, the hub all assembled, the last thing I like to do is give it a good old shot with brake clean. Get all that dirty, greasy fingerprint stuff we got on it from us being all over it. And guys, that's all there is for the front brakes on the Isuzu Trooper. Now, if you have an auto locking hub like this vehicle came with, you're obviously gonna have to do the hub locking stuff from inside the vehicle to test functionality barn and that. This is how you do it. On to the rear brakes. The rear Isuzu Trooper brake pads and rotors replacement job is pretty straightforward, guys, compared to the front. We're not taking apart that manual locking hub. But we have a couple things to contend with. We do have the e-brake cable, which limits our mobility of our caliper. You'll see that in a second. Also, this rear caliper, like most with integrated emergency brake or handbrake cables, needs to be pressed in and wound with a tool. So you will need one of these guys to complete this job. Now, I don't know if this is universal, but I had to use size F. Seems to fit the piston the best to push it back in. So definitely get yourself one of these tools. It's a pain in the butt to have to do that, I know, but it's the only way it works and that's how you set the tension with the e-brake cable and everything. So do not try to just C-clamp that piston back. If you use too much force, I bet you can blow that piston right out, especially an old piston like this, but you do not want to just try to force it. Look, if you see those two little indentations, that's a sign right there you need to use a tool. So the other difference is the bolts holding on the caliper are not 22 millimeter in the back, they're 17 millimeter. And you can get it both of those with long sockets or just regular, you know, long sockets on a half inch ratchet should get the job done. Hit it with some PV blaster or penetrating oil of choice. Let it sit for a bit. Let's go ahead and get this caliper off of here. Let the brake cleaner do some work. No need to keep any of these pads in since we're having to manually Put that rotor back in, so just go ahead and pop them out with a screwdriver. Now, if you look inside that caliper, you can see the piston there has the two indentations on the side. That's where our tool is gonna fit. We're gonna turn clockwise and retract that piston back into the caliper. And once you have that piston pretty much flush with the caliper, as you can see there when I pull the tool out, you are good to go. That piston is all the way back in. 
And you can see here, nice and flush. With the piston retracted, the rest of the job is straightforward, old-fashioned brake job. So put our hardware in here. All right, new hardware and pads installed in the caliper. Go ahead and slam this new rotor on. Already looking better. Let's go ahead and put the caliper back up over the rotor. Slide your caliper back up. Get the 17 millimeter bolts. And that's it. We just gotta repeat this process on the other side of the car. It's time to fire up the old pressure bleeder and get this brake system fully bled, guys. Dot four fluid going in here. Pick a fluid of your choice. Very well aware that everything says dot three under the hood, but you can always upgrade to dot four. It just raises the boiling pressure of that brake fluid, but you can't go backwards. So if your car says dot four, you can't go dot three. Easy. So, filled up the bleeder. We're now gonna pressurize the reservoir. All right, we're at the passenger rear, our first bleeder valve we're gonna crack open. I want to show you guys what I rigged up here. I got a new bottle set up. Nice clear bottle so I can see the color of the fluid. Drill a nice tight hole through the lid where the tubing can go. You want your tubing to be down, submerge in some liquid. This is actually old brake fluid from the reservoir and that's how bad it already looked in the reservoir. So you know this fluid coming out of the calipers is gonna be gnarly. Put that nicely on the ground. Bleeder valve is right here under this little rubber cap. For the rear caliper, it's gonna be an eight millimeter to loosen this nut. So you wanna put your wrench in such a way on first so you can go counterclockwise to break that loose. And now you're gonna attach your hose and it should be a very snug fit. If it's not snug, you're gonna introduce air potentially here at the bleeder. So I like to get it really tight, force it on there. And with the system pressurized, all we need to do is crack this valve and we should see some dark fluid coming through. And look at that, just like coffee. We didn't open up the braking system at all, so if there's any air, it's residual from something before. All we're trying to do is get the fluid to come nice and clear like fresh brake fluid. Okay, we're flowing nice and clear that honey color of new brake fluid. So we're gonna go ahead and seal this bleeder valve right up. Go ahead and pull your hose up. Let it dangle up for a little bit and let that fluid drain into your bottle. And I'll tell you what guys, we're off to a pretty good start because look at the color of this fluid. Definitely time to be changed. Okay, on to the driver rear. We'll catch up with you guys on the driver front, which will be our last one. So go ahead in this order, passenger rear, Driver rear, passenger front, driver front. We've made our way all the way up to the driver front and that's gonna be our last one to go. So nothing different here. We're gonna pop this cap off, obviously. When you're all set, make sure your brake reservoir is topped off. Put your cap back on, tighten it down. And you're done, guys. Brake fluid, flushed. The entire brake job on our Suzu Trooper Complete. Of course we're gonna see the damage and, geez, look at this fluid, guys. That is nice and thick. This brake fluid had been long overdue for a change, so fresh fluid in there. Our Suzu Trooper, our little pooper trooper, is gonna be quite happy. On to the next project.